start the start the recording and then we'll, we'll go from there um um thank you everyone for uh for joining today uh, my name is greg Svitak. uh for those of you who don't know me on uh, the terror community uh terror.do community um i'm the um myself and antonis who is on actually good to see you buddy is on the call here um we are the uh you know the the course um facilitators and for the software um software engineering course for climate change that's offered by terra um and so you know um we were asked by alex um and if um who's who was a learning for action fellow um maybe alex if you can maybe come off mute for a second and maybe kind of give a quick overview of of, of how you were you know why you think this is so valuable to the uh to the terra community um and your personal passion about it that'd be helpful um and then after that we'll turn it over to bias to have a, a short presentation and then we can have questions after that okay so alex um you want to kind of uh, come off mute if you can and um you know give a short overview of, of why you think this is such an awesome thing and your personal passion about open source and climate change Alex. Uh, can you hear me now? Sorry, I was fighting yes. the phone for a little bit. Uh, yes, we can, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I find that, uh, you know, I mean, uh, open source software has been uh, wildly influential and, you know, brought a lot of benefits to a lot of different areas. Uh, like, I mean, machine learning and AI would be like one great example where essentially everybody uses the same few libraries and uh, not do not reinvent the wheel. And in a lot of the climate related areas, I mean, after, after a little bit of research, I couldn't find as much uh, of this kind of a base infrastructure. And I wanted to contribute to something as well after the, after the course, uh, you know, after doing the work, um, learning in action course. And yeah, so I found this amazing project by Tobias, where he's essentially gathered a lot of uh, climate change and other sustainability concern related uh, open source projects and kind of found, you know, the miss, the, some of those missing pieces. So I feel that it's important to get this built infrastructure built out. So, you know, like companies working in energy or carbon accounting or carbon finance or whatever could like build on top of one shared basis. I think uh, Tobias has a much more extensive um, philosophical background on this. So, I, you know, which will he'll talk about it much more during the actual presentation. But uh, yeah, thank you Tobias for joining today. Yeah, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Um, yeah, my name is Tobias Augsburger. I am working as a climate scientist for um, Research Center Jülich. And uh, yeah, as a, a personal side project, I did this uh, open sustained tech website that is um, uh, since two years now under construction. And yeah, I hope to get um, more people into the project, more. Uh, uh, and also more feedback and more ideas about how to continue uh, with this project by also giving this talk. So it's also uh, my personal interest and in why I give this presentation. But um, one important um, aspect is also that I want to talk about the, um, the things that are not done yet with open source culture and open source technology in the area of climate change, because I think there's huge opportunities that are untapped uh, at the moment. So um, like uh, Alex uh, just said, um, open source and the open source movement have um, uh, changed the whole uh, software ecosystem um today in cloud computing artificial intelligence robotics and all those let's say new um digital products there is open source very common and it's the it's created a baseline for people to uh, as somehow a collective uh, sort of um, um trust in certain knowledge they can 
depend on. And this way to work is actually quite old. It's you can find more on this on standing on the shoulders of giant that a lot of uh, people working in math or in physics they said that they can only um, continue the knowledge that others created because they have been open source so that the, the math behind all those conclusions have actually been open source. And yeah, on climate change, um, or let's say in the area of sustainable development, there is um, the question, how can this, uh, this movement actually impact this innovative domain? And um, so uh, I did with some friends a huge investigation about this ecosystem. So how does open source ecosystem uh, really impact on climate change? Um, so why is this so interesting? Because, um, yeah, there is, uh, let's say, not much time to really to really scale um, climate solutions worldwide. And climate change is a worldwide problem, as you can see by the Edgar Emissions Database on the right hand side. So we have not en enough time to really um, let's say do patents on all our climate solutions. If we would do that, then climate change could actually not be stopped. That's the problem. So if you really want to scale those solutions worldwide, you need to find a way to collaborate in this technology development. Um, if you don't do that, it will be just too late. That's the problem. And that's why open source is so interesting. And um, it's not only about energy system and the development of energy system that are very important, but it's also about environmental intelligence. That means how we use data and software to understand how our, um, how, what is the state of our environment? How does our state changes based on action we are doing? And uh, here are three, um, quite good open source projects um, from, the, um, from the list, like the open climate fix that are, they are um, doing predictions for uh, photovoltaic um, uh, power uh, uh, generation for uh, traders in the UK so that you can really know how much photovoltaic power really will be generated. This gives you the opportunity to um, uh, decrease your um, uh, your fossil fuel uh, power generation. Um, then on the right side there is the um, the OCO two peak uh, project that is um, uh, using the OCO two satellite data from NASA to really measure um, uh, point sources worldwide. Um, you see here a map from Las Vegas and here the push prone um, <coughs> um, uh, satellite track and the different emissions that have been measured there. <coughs> and what you can also see on the uh, here is the forecast risk for deforestation in Africa that has also been done with open source software. <coughs> Sorry guys, I'm a little bit sick. But yeah, um, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Open Sustain Tech is um, uh, over, uh, we found now over 1,400 active projects that we curated. Um, 24 um, open source contributors helped us with that, but actually most of this has been done by myself. And um, uh, all, projects or most of the projects are listed by Git repository links directly. This enables us to automatically extract metadata from the project and to see how they involve, what is actually health of those projects. And we can calculate um, uh, health indicators for these projects. Um, all projects are um, uh, being uh, sorted by uh, how open they are. So if there's no open source license, then we are not listing them if they are active. So we don't list inactive projects if they are documented and if they have some community that is emerging around them. So if there are people 
inside a project that are not part of the core team. Um, and we uh, all projects need to have some kind of relation to climate change or environmental sustainability. And in this way, we come uh, to quite some projects and it costs me quite some time to actually gather all this project. And it's actually now a complete um, database of what is there worldwide. And it really takes me now sometimes days or weeks to find new projects that are uh, not listed yet. And I'm really now trying to find the new projects that are coming out so that I can list them. There's also a Twitter account where every new project gets been gets a tweet, and it's also quite successful, like posting those uh, those um, projects in social media to give them a little bit more attention and marketing. Um, yeah, from the like I said, from the from the list, we can now extract metadata, like you see here. We we collected a huge bunch of metadata from those projects. The idea is actually to improve the website itself so that you have more user experience. And this was the first step to, to gather this data. Um, this is actually now working quite well, not fully automatically. Um, I have to, uh, not with every new entry in the list, this data gets updated. I have to do it still manually, but um, all the labels get uh, uh, are gathered fully automatically over the GitHub API. We also include other APIs in the future. Um, so to, to sum up, what is actually the problem that I've personally see when I actually looked on all open source projects that are out there, um, uh, you will realize that there is um, a lot of information and huge amount of very awesome projects about the state of our ecosystems. All kinds of projects that you can imagine <laughs> that shows the state of our ecosystem in general, like about soil, water, um, about um, the biodiversity, uh, measuring the, the health of ecosystem with satellite data, a lot of artificial intelligence projects worldwide um, that have huge uh, um, coverage, global coverage, very good resolution. But what is actually missing is um, everything related to companies and uh, the impact on, especially the environmental impact of companies. So there is no open science about the environmental impact of individual companies. That's something, uh, yeah, I can imagine why this is the case, but I'm still a little bit confused sometimes. So there's a very small amount of projects that go into these directions, but I will come to this later on. But the, what this leads to, because there is no public information about the impact of individual companies, that is, I mean, um, uh, information that is really uh, measuring the impact of companies. Uh, this leads to the greenwashing problem we have worldwide. <laughs> and this is caused by the fact that the rating of companies, so because companies are rated um, in their environmental impact and social and also their governments by so-called ESG rating uh, uh, computation. This is actually also, uh, it's a um, um, uh, computer science problem that uh, is being done widely with um, with artificial intelligence, with uh, natural language processing. So you have a lot of um, ESG reports, they are called, that they are automatically processed. And there's other data sources that those rating agencies are using. And because of, based on that, you create an environmental rating of companies. But there's just one project that is really trying to open up those ratings because the the hidden way those ratings have been done in the, in the past. And also because there was no standardization and normally that's also a big thing about open source. It creates standards in software, in data processing and in, in, in the methods, how you do uh, calculations. Um, yeah, this is not just been done by one single open source project. And this is really at the beginning. It has uh, been, um, done by the Linux Foundation and um, uh, by Red Hat. But 
the, uh, inside the strategy board a lot of companies where I don't really expect that they really created something that will avoid greenwashing in the future. So, but there's, let's say one, there's some light at the end of the tunnel that is really interesting and that's called spatial finance. Because you need, so all those ratings that have been done of companies to see if they are really sustainable and to create sustainable investment uh, uh, funds at the end, they have been done by uh, data that is not about the impact of company. This was about reports and very, let's say, numbers that were not related to reality or physics so much, but there's no the spatial finance. Um, I would really call it a movement that is trying to measure the uh, impact of companies based on their assets they own. So you go with your satellite data and you look really for every look, uh, geo look, uh, location worldwide that has been owned by this asset and then, or by this uh, company. And then <coughs> you measure what is the emission from those place? What, how is the environment changes around this place? How does the biodiversity changes around this place? How does the, um, uh, water quality changes around this place, how does soil quality changes, but there's also the possibility to see how does the social, um, uh, the, 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 yeah, not just the environmental factor change, but also the social factor change. And this is um, uh, be, uh, can be done with high resolution satellite data that is now becoming more and more open sourced and there's a huge open source movement also uh, emerging now in this area. Even much greater actually that the climate uh, change um, uh, area itself. The geospatial um, open source movement is getting very huge, allowing us to measure um, the impact with earth observation quite detailed. Um, but unfortunately also here, we could find just a very few open source projects like the asset level transition risk in the um, global coal, oil and gas supply chain. Uh, I can um, just so we can have a look on those projects because very, um, I would think impressive. This is really a, an open source project that mapped the localization, uh, the, um, the geo position of um, every uh, level of the supply chain within the fossil fuel industry. So you could actually now take a satellite and measure how is there the methane emissions, uh, how is there the CO2 emissions, how does the environment change around this area, and you can create a rating based on this information that has been public uh, published within this project. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, the, the, the big difference is that you have now suddenly something that is really measuring in a physical way with a traceable value with a real arrow bar, because all this other information about EHC rating not had real, real arrow bar like it normally has in physics, you'd have no uncertainty. So this is playing with numbers. Um, and this is now over. And what has also been able with like those approaches are, and this is a combination actually of different um, open source project from um, Open Sustain Tech. I tried to show you, I tried to show you how you can actually combine those projects and create like something like an open carbon offset. You could say, oh, carbon offset's not a good thing, but if you would really create an open source pipeline that is really measuring energy consumption then it's calculating the carbon intensity like projects like electricity map from that. Then you calculate where to actually plant trees. And then you do the planting of the trees automatically. And then this important part, you actually measure how good your trees are growing and how much uh, carbon is actually compensated by those actions. Then you could actually create a carbon offset that is traceable. And this does not exist yet. So it would be a unique selling point and would avoid greenwashing again. Um, 
another important point about openness itself is if it's actually a very good indicator for every company or any action that you see in sustainability in general. If somebody is open about his conclusion, that means he shows you his data, how he compute, computes his data, how, what's the software they're using, what's the plots, then this is a good, very good indicator that the intentions of this organizations or of this person are actually sustainable. And this is very good because you, you have actually suddenly you have an indicator for sustainability. The thing is, maybe it is not sustainable what they claim, but they can get into a process that somebody can say, you, you have their problem with your assumptions. You can improve your assumptions and then you can get more sustainable because you, you, you improve your knowledge, like this standing on the shoulders of giants uh, idea uh, is uh, proposing. And so one idea that's, let's say a personal, let's say a vision from myself, like I, I was also discussing with a lot of people now is what you could build from that is an open impact um, fund that is um, really measuring impact in a scientific, traceable and greenwashing resistant way. And this does not exist yet. And so this is why it could, the, the, that's why to, 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 just to, to bring this to the title of the presentation, that's why the open source culture is so interesting because it creates a systematic change about how we deal with our environment by opening up really the impact that we are creating and to not allow greenwashing. That is from my point of view, one of the biggest challenges that is uh, uh, in the next decades in climate uh, actions in general to avoid those behaviors. Yeah, I hope this is uh, what you expected. So, um, uh, yeah, if you have, if you're interested into that, just contact me. Um, it's a uh, really pleasure to be part of this, uh, uh, of, 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 of your community. And I hope we have a good discussion about this and you have some questions about uh, our work and what's, uh, what we've done. Thanks for that. Um... Thanks for that, um, Tobias. Uh, what I'd like to do now is just open it up to the group um, for questions here. Uh, you know, if you have a question, please just raise your raise your hand. Um, you know, via via Slack or um, um, or or just type a message in the chat if you uh, feel more comfortable doing that. That's okay. All right, I'll open it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, more, more than a question, just a probe into something that you mentioned when we talked before. Uh, you had this, and I think you kind of a little bit touched on this, that uh, the idea that you could do with this kind of a holistic picture of all the technologies that exist in this space, you've done this gap analysis, and you talked a bit how that you found that there is missing, like, air... Uh, missing projects in certain areas, you know, like, for example, yeah. you found that there is missing stuff in finance. Like, yeah, I think that's one more really fascinating part to this is that, you know, if you have the entire picture, you can see where the most, uh, where there is maybe not as much activity as there should be, uh, as, as it would be useful to be and direct better the activities of volunteers who would want to contribute. You know, if you want to be uh, impactful in your open source work, uh, that potentially can help, you know, give people direction. Again, that's not from our previous conversation. I found it pretty interesting myself. Yeah, it's it has more untapped potential. Uh, I, I really was focused on the financial industry because I think there's the most uh, impact that can be created. But there are other areas like, especially the um, act one area that I was not expecting is the emission area. There's not 
that many models how to um, calculate, for example, the transportation of emissions or how to access those um, uh, greenhouse gas satellites like CO, um, OCO2 or also free from NASA. Um, so there's quite some, let's say, data treasure, but uh, processing those data is quite difficult if you don't have a good API or a certain standard how to how to really get those data in like a Python environment or an R environment. So um, in general, there we can also uh, there's a lot of other areas like. Um, from my perspective, there's the, the whole open hardware area that is underestimated, like in the area of um, um, CPUs uh, or in the area of um, uh, electronics, there's a lot of open hardware emerging like Arduino or Raspberry Pi that have open architecture. But <coughs> in the area of photovoltaic, there's just one really open hardware project. In the area of um, wind turbines, there's one uh, really open and professional, that's the point, documented and professional, not like some, some hacking of some people, that's something different. Um, but yeah, there's so much, um, especially in the scaling of those technologies, so much potential that I'm, I don't understand why there's not more. <clears throat> um, so one of the questions that Antonis, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Giles, you go ahead, please go ahead and ask, ask your question and then I'll ask mine after that. Oh, thanks, Greg. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot to this, it's super interesting. Um, I actually have two questions, you can choose to answer both of them or not. The first one is, uh, what is kind of next for your project and how, how do you see that moving forward? Um, and the second one, completely un unrelated, is do you know of any applications of kind of open source culture beyond the world of development and engineering, et cetera? I'm not from a dev background specifically, but I think the, the idea of this approach, the kind of open source development approach, feels like it has applications beyond the world of development itself. And I just wonder if, out of interest, do you know of any successful uh, kind of implementations of that? Um, so the first question, yes. So the idea of the, so if you go to the website, you will see that the website is really quite a list that is we're like how we started and this is growing, 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 and then now it gets too much. Um, but um, I hope to really create a, let's say a, a, a website with a search engine that has much more user experience so that you can search, for example, for programming languages and that you can also um, search for, for um, interconnecting domains because at the moment, every project is just been edited to one domain, but many projects have actually certain domains where you can list them. Um, and there's um, what I also want to do is, or we want to do, there's some other people also involved, is um, to um, vis visualize the ecosystem a little bit better, to create maps from the data. What I am also would like to do is to create more labels of the project. So because many of this project are actually data projects, there's just an, let's say in, in Python interface or an R interface that helps you to interact with those data sets. That is very helpful in, 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 in those, uh, uh, if, you, if you just get into different topics, you don't want to really look into, okay, how can I process all the data? You want an easy interface and all those different um, kinds of projects, we want to really to, to add more topics. So is this a framework, is it a tool? Is it a, actually a data set? What are the data sets behind it? Um, I would also like to create a map of the, uh, if you look on the air table that we create out of the list, I would like to create a map of the organizations behind those projects. Um, and so on and so on and to give an education area. So the education area 
would also be uh, good to, to really to add more content and also to, to make it at the end like a central knowledge platform for open, sustainable um, technology. So to also have a news area, to have a um, area where maybe also community area, like a, a forum where people can exchange, exchange on cross uh, topic domains. Um, yeah, on the second question, um, so the open source, um, so what is uh, quite successful is the, um, let's say five, uh, in the area of uh, electronics, there will come no complete open source CPUs. Uh, so there is an area like an electronic domain where open source gets very strong. Um, okay, so you said you're not more in the dev uh, domain. So I think there's the whole Creative Commons area, like there's a lot of artwork now that has been published open source. So that it is licensed in a way that you can actually uh, remix those art much better. And this is becoming more and more popular that actually art itself is being published. There's uh, a movement called open government that's also very related to the open source movement. Um, so that there is, yeah, but it's also a data thing. So in general, um, I think it's about culture than the best thing is really the creative comments um, that are showing how this can also be used in, in culture domains. Yeah. Um, so the, it is more a, techn a technology thing and scientific uh, thing, but it's also getting more attention now in the, uh, uh, let's say, art domain. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, Greg, I think you want to ask your question next, right? Uh, no, uh, actually, if, if you uh, if you would like to go next, and then I I can I can ask. Oh, there's there. uh, I think Flora or Char uh, Charlie asked the question in the chat. Sure. I'm yeah, not sure Flora. which one of you. First. Yeah, let's go. Flora. Let's go with let's go with Flora because she was oh. next, and then Charlie after that. All right. Um, thanks for the talk. It's super interesting and really also resonate with a lot of ideas that I had a while ago. Um, so I guess my, I guess like first question is like how to contribute to, <laughs> to this, um, to like the open sustainability um, technology project and, um, and also maybe like another question or more like an idea was like I, I was really fascinated by a lot of sort of gaps that you proposed earlier like that you identified of like how to sort of um, cross uh, sort of use um, data from different open source technology and create something else but I guess like that would require more effort and it, it might be cool to sort of like have say like an issue kind of thing for the open um, sustainability technology um, website to basically uh, list out what would be the potential of like using different thing of using different project and create something new. And basically that can sort of start out like that can kind of seed more open source project to actually achieving those. Um, I don't know if that's um, that's anything close to, and that if that's any feasible, but that's kind of an idea. Um, um, yeah, that's so. The first thing, yeah, like you said, um, the 
like combining those projects sounds simpler than it is actually. Um, and that's one reason why I also uh, am still working on this project. I'm fascinating is that um, all those people, they are <clears throat> not so much um, concerned actually about how to interconnect those tools or those, uh, let's say, puzzle pieces together. That's in general a problem. Uh, in 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 uh, in robotics, they have uh, solved those pro problem because they, uh, the, like the whole open source ecosystem, they said, okay, we use now one middleware, and this is how every piece of uh, software communicates with each other. So it was quite much easier for them to really inter uh, connect different open source packages with each other. But um, yeah, like you said, it's not that easy to really interact with those projects. Um, but if you want to participate in one of those, or in, let's say in the Open Sustain Tech project, then um, the easiest way to do so is um, you check. That's something actually that uh, um, Alex, uh, Alex um, um, I talked also about with Alex is um, to create a website that helps you by your experience and by your knowledge to find an open source project where you can contribute to. Um, but you can already do it with the database. Um, what you have to look for is um, there are projects always that have um, so-called uh, first good issues. This is a certain label in GitHub. And this is an entry level issue that helps you to get into the, yeah, here you see it. We can sort by this, I think. Uh, yeah, you see here, there's some projects that have this uh, entered this label, first good issues. And this helps you to get into those projects because this is really easy entry friendly projects. And good projects always have a contribution guide. But, and yeah, and most of them had a code of conduct. Um, so, um, and you can sort the project also by languages here. So you just go to the website, click here on show me the database. Then you, um, you sort it by, for example, the programming language that you are used to. Uh, you can do this here. And then um, there should be um, dominating language. And then we should have, you can here also say that you just want to pick one programming language. Then you can also filter it by a certain domain. And then you, in this way, you can say, I want a Python project that is in the biodiversity area where I can contribute to. Um, so the whole process, I hope to do uh, um, as also as a website, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but still pos already possible. I hope this answered the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Uh, can I ask a quick follow-up question? Um, so, like in terms of like the the open sustain sustainable technology project, so you highlighted a lot of sort of next step for the project. So, um, is there like people of specific stack that you're looking for to say like help accelerate those um, next steps or things like that? Um. Um, yeah, definitely. We have a, a call that will be in uh, 15 minutes, actually, uh, normally with, with uh, the people that are involved at the moment. There's are two people at the moment that are actively um, uh, working on a project on a daily, on a, let's say, daily basis. Um, there's a broader community that uh, helps from time to time. Um, and yeah, the skills is, um, can be very different skills. It can be um, 
to write blog posts about projects. That's something I realized is very successful to actually write about those ecosystems because nobody is doing that really well. Then what you can do is you can um, just investigate for those projects. That's what I, that's actually what costs me most of my time. Um, what you can do is, and that's what I'm actually cannot do is I'm looking for people that know how to really build websites because I have no experience in building websites. You can see this by the website we, we, uh, we, we built here. Um, it's a markdown. Um, uh, it has been built out of the markdown files of the project. But I really hope to make it something that has some user experience, that creates some, some better feeling and some, also it would be create, to create some, let's say some, yeah, some cards for every project to have an image and also to, to, to visualize the data of every project. So there's to really give an, uh, to make it fun to browse those web, those uh, those webs, uh, this website, because at the moment it's not. <laughs> I really I understand this is not fun to go through the list. So um, the other part is um, you can, um, uh, if you are interested in one of those areas, just you can go to those areas and um, really uh, like if you think. Um, there is a domain missing. It, this would be so, I would so, so um, uh, yeah, happy about this. If somebody gives me the feedback, hey, there is a complete domain missing in your list, right? <laughs> because uh, I really try to cover everything. Sure, thanks. So the, the thing is you can just, if you find an issue, um, you can go, you can just here pick one issue. I actually, um, like here's the East, here's for example, one issue, right? You can also create an issue and discuss with us here. It's a good thing about open source projects. And here's for example, one idea that is by natural language pro processing to label every project to the different sustainable development goals. That would be awesome. That can be done with natural language processing tools but I have not found the time to do it yet. Um, another thing is to extract the DOY of every project so that you can actually create another list that are actually the papers and publications that have been done for every project that has been listed. <clears throat> cool. Um, what other questions here, guys? This has been a good discussion. There's a, still a question in the chat from Charlie. Uh, mm -hmm. Are companies doing enough to educate their workforce on the issues and potential conflicts around sustainability issues? What should they be doing? And also she says, uh, I can help you with that. So I understand. To, so you want to know what your company can do to uh, um, to, uh, in sustainability issues in general, or related to open source, I think. Um, so, if I understand the question correct, I, I would check. Uh, can I, can I, should I clarify? Or I apologize if I, <laughs> no I'm problem. trying. I think I'm trying to do too much here today. Um, I'll even turn on my video, look at that. Um, so, okay, I guess the question comes from, I work with a lot of companies, a lot of enterprise companies, and you know, they have a lot of initiatives. Everyone has their initiative to sort of, you know, you know, whatever their thing is in sustainability, you know, carbon emissions, whatever. And, and I think what's happening is, from my perspective, they have these grand plans of, and goals for, 2030, 2025, or whatever. The employees, however, um, in terms of upskilling their workforce and getting their workforce to understand what the sort of technical or technological initiatives are, I'm not seeing that 
as far as the sustainability goals in any way, shape or form. Do you think that companies are doing enough to educate and train their workforce in these initiatives and the, and the tech opportunities to upskill or not? And if, if they're not, what should they be doing? For example, for what you're doing, I mean, if you, what you're doing would be great for employees to learn about this and to understand how to sort of participate in innovation and, you know. Yeah. Um, so uh, what I've, so at the moment I'm working in a research facility. Um, there's a lot about sustainability, um, but um, inside of companies, um, I think there is, um, what I've seen so far is that um, the many companies are a little bit afraid to really be scientific about and use scientific approaches about their sustainability because the outcome will be in some, in many cases, not that good. Um, what there from, I think there's a huge opportunity to um, train people in sustainable domain or in sustainable technology in general. Um, but this is not done enough. And um, the, uh, but there's no, no more and more actually uh, studies uh, that, uh, no, uh, let's say, um, um, uh, I see a lot of master courses and bachelor courses coming out that in the in sustainable technology in general. So there is, let's say, a shift in education in general, but inside of companies, um, uh, that's really hard um, to, uh, yeah, to, because sustainability is such a complex domain, but sharing those knowledge between companies, what is actually our, our training sessions that has definitely some uh, some impact but I have not found that much so if you look on the educational section um, on the website um, this is all the um, educational uh, courses that I could found that are well documented and seem to be professional and up to date there are some but it's not about business sustainability it is also not about ESG ratings, or it is not about to measure carbon footprint inside a company, or let's say smart design, how to avoid emissions on the long run, or to be more um, environmental friendly. All those courses that I could found, with some exceptions like the uh, to catch the sun, or um, there's a lot of about earth observation, but not about how to design a product in a sustainable way. So I can only speak about what has been open, but there's not that much about uh, open design, open construction, uh, as I can see at the moment. Yes. So, um, for anybody like, uh, if you're, for example, interested in Python development and you want to know about climate change, there's a lot of content that I can show you here that like the Climate Laboratory, that is really an awesome project to learn Python uh, with climate change, actually. So you learn to uh, the most, one of the most powerful tools in the world, um, uh, based on one of the most pressing problems in the world. Uh, and it's really an awesome project and very detailed. And it's also uh, correct from the physics behind it. But such things would be great to, to have in, um, in um, also for, let's say, more business related topics. Um, but to answer your question a little bit more, um, we try to map those projects based on if they are nonprofit or not. 
and you see here that we have 70 non uh, for profit companies actually mapped and the rest is non profit academia community uh, collaboration and government agencies. There's more. Let's. Uh, I have to. No, no. There needs to be. Uh, there's a problem of the sorting. Let's see. Um, but to give you an uh, uh, impression in general, there's not many open source projects that are being um, published by uh, for-profit organizations. This is really a blind spot. In in other domains like cloud computing, there's a lot of for-profit companies involved. Um, like um, there's no um, uh, billions of dollars invested into cloud infrastructure, open source, uh, into artificial intelligence frameworks and all those stuff that, um, that uh, if you go right to the beginning here, there's a really a, a multi um, billion dollar industry merging, especially in the US of investments going into open source projects in this domain here, but not in climate change. <laughs> That's the interesting thing. There's like the most successful, um, like uh, electricity map. That's the most like, successful commercial open source project that is out there from my perspective and my investigations. What they, uh, what they do is um, they, create uh, an API so that you can uh, predict and calculate um, your carbon uh, emissions actually based on the electricity consumption you make uh, by the uh, energy uh, demand you uh, have in certain areas in the world. This is really a huge uh, open source project with a huge community, but at the same time it is um, uh, a commercial product with a for-profit organization behind it. But this is an exception, unfortunately. Very cool. Um, thank you so much. Um, uh, all right, guys, we have four more minutes left. Any, any other questions we want to cover here? I have a question. So um, what kind of licensing do you usually see for these projects? I, I clicked around a little bit. I'm curious if you see any trends. Are they just wide open licensing or not even specified? Um, we extract the license also in the database. So if you really, you can actually sort it and then you can see what is the most dominant. The statistics we will do in the future now, we are actually doing a study and a publication based on these numbers. Um, so, um, it is, it's, it's, you see it, it's really a complete mix of this MIT. It is a GPL a lot now. Um, if, if you want to really make your, uh, if you really make sure that, um, that, um, uh, every changes to this projects get back into your uh, project is, is a GPL. If you want to permit more commercial use and you're not so restrictive, it's a lot of MIT you can find. Um, it really depends, but there's also a lot of custom license uh, has been used, Apache. It really depends also on the, on the domain. Um, I think in, the, um, in uh, academia, it's more GPL. Um, and in, uh, in the industries, they know that MIT is easier for them. So if, if you want your project being so that it's, so that sometimes companies are afraid to use GPL or AGPL licenses in, within their um, products because it's, it's the more complicated license and the MIT license quite easy, you just have to account for it. 
and put it somewhere in your project that you used your your project is based on those uh, MIT uh, um, on, on this uh, project but the GPL um, demands that you feed back the changes that you made from your productive code etc so um, I would not say that there is one um, very dominant uh, license um, there is actually a uh, Okay, we have not that much time, but um, there is in the on the blog I, uh, 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 in the blog post. Uh, so we're also writing about this, um, and with Irene, she's my colleague that uh, is helping me from the Super Climate Accelerator program, um, and she did some visualization already of the data set. Just you can see where are the many stars um, you can see also see here where in which domain is which license very uh, common uh, you can see uh, how in which domain is which uh, programming language uh, being used you can see what are the projects most contributors so if you're interested in such kind of numbers we will publish more in the future but here are some <laughs> okay you can also see here what are the project with the most stars. That is actually those electricity map project I just saw, showed you. That is from the tomorrow is the organization that um, is behind this. And here's this is electricity map. That's amazing data. Thank you. But this needs to be improved because here are some projects that are actually awesome lists there are and yeah. Okay. Um, I can send you the presentation if you're interested in. So uh, if you'd like to, I can send you all the emails I have in the list of the presentation. Okay. You can also click on the links that I integrated into the slides. It's okay for you. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Then. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, it's we're at time here. Um, uh, you know, we really appreciate this. And, you know, maybe in the future for the software engineering course, uh, Tobias, maybe Antonis and I would, wouldn't mind uh, having you participate because we often get questions and one on ones and stuff about, you know, how do we contribute to open source? I don't want to leave, leave, see you, you don't want to leave my job and so on and so forth. So, anyways, um, we look forward to possibly collaborating with you on that in the future. Yeah, I'm very happy to help you. That's uh, been a huge honor for me. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And we really appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye, everyone. everyone. Thanks, Alex.